Canada's largest industries took a major hit this week when General Motors announced its plant in Oshawa, Ontario will be closed. That will put 2,800 workers out of work directly, more indirectly. But even that gut punch, as the Prime Minister has called it, is, well, it's small compared to the beating that's taking place in Alberta's oil sector, with prices at historic lows, closing in $10, $12, $13 a barrel. Alberta is losing $80 million a day. Unemployment in cities like Calgary is almost double the national average, over 8%. Why are Canada's two big industries in such a crisis, and what will the government do to get jobs back here. To find out, we're joined now by the Innovation Minister, Navdeep Baines. Mr. Baines, great to have you on the program. Let's start with GM. What exactly will your government do to keep that GM plant in Oshawa open? So as you said, this is a big blow uh, to Oshawa, to the workers in Oshawa, to a very important sector in the Canadian economy. That's why I reached out directly and spoken with, along with the Prime Minister, with the unions and Unifor in particular, I called my provincial counterpart and the municipal leadership as well to talk about next steps and how we can find a solution for these workers. Because I firmly believe GM's made a big mistake by turning its back on these workers in Oshawa. Uh, we won't make that mistake. Here's my problem. What leverage do you have for General Motors? The federal government bailed out the auto companies almost $14 billion. Then your government right. forgave General Motors and another auto company over a billion dollars in loans. You don't have to pay it back, you forgave it. Did that basically mean that the government's given up any leverage you have of General Motors to actually keep them there? Was that a bad decision to forgive their loan? These are 500,000 jobs in the automotive sector, both direct and indirect. So we want to make sure we do everything possible to keep these jobs here. We're also focused, Evan, not only on the cars of today, but on the cars of tomorrow as well. So we're bringing in investments in research and development, new technologies to build the car of the future yeah, but as I well. get it, but this GM's building the car, car of the future elsewhere. That's what, they literally said that. And I, I guess my question is, do you have any leverage for General Motors? And if so, does that mean, uh, you've done this before your government, you've offered money, you just gave $20 million to a Maple Leaf food company for a plan. I don't know if there are any strings attached there. Will your government offer General Motors money to stay? And if so, will there be strings attached? So if there is a solution, if that requires investments from the federal government, we're willing to step up. We've done that before, Evan. We changed a program that the previous government had that wasn't working to attract investments called the Automotive Innovation Fund. And we've actually created a new fund with new monies to bring in additional investments. So that's why we're really bullish and optimistic about the automotive sector okay. in Oshawa and in Canada. Minister, last question on that, though. Um, you say you're going to do everything you can. Donald Trump's already openly threatened General Motors that he will pull any government support for their transition to electric vehicles if they don't keep jobs where they close them in the U.S., Ohio, and Michigan. Will you, as the innovation minister, also say to General Motors, no more money from the citizen, no more money from the public unless that plant goes back? Will you use that kind of stick instead of just carrots? Our focus is really on the investments and one of the issues raised by the Prime Minister which is a concern raised by General Motors are the aluminum and steel tariffs. This has actually added costs which has made it more difficult to produce these vehicles, made them less competitive which has an impact on jobs. So we're actually focusing on that solution as well. So how can we move forward to eliminate tariffs for steel and aluminum? That brings me, again, you're the industry minister, you've got the automobile industry with a gut punch, and then you've got the other big industry, the oil industry, is getting creamed. I mean, you know that. We're losing $80 million a day in Alberta and billions of dollars in federal taxes because of this. They are demanding your government press forward uh, with a pipeline to get access to market. You are the basically right. the industry minister. What will you do to help that industry, not tomorrow, today? Well, we've taken action by purchasing the Trans Mountain pipeline to make sure we can continue to see that move forward to put shovels in the ground. We're also looking at diversifying our markets. We're signing free trade agreements. We're working with the sector to bring in additional investments. In the fall economic statement, we brought forward tax measures to make it easier for companies to invest in more capital and, equi and more capital and equipment. So we're taking every possible tool that we have in our toolbox to bring in more investments in many parts of the economy, but also in the oil and gas sector well, as well. Rachel and we Notley, understand the, what they're going through. The, the Alberta Premier, Go Rachel ahead. Notley, wants your government to fund 
uh, the, the purchase of rail cars to move the oil because you can't get the pipeline built. Will you commit to, f to helping the government of Alberta buy more rail cars to move more oil so they can sell to markets that will actually pay a decent price? We'll get the pipeline built. Uh, we're very clear that this is in our national interest. We're focused on building that pipeline. We're engaging the Indigenous communities. We're engaging and working with environmental groups as well. That's our priority. We've taken immediate action on that. And the government of Alberta knows that and Canadians know that. We've been very clear about saying how the environment and the economy go hand in hand. And we've taken bold leadership by purchasing yeah. that pipeline and making sure that it's being built uh, to make sure that we can send yeah. our uh, oil and gas to other markets outside the U.S. To, so we don't sell right. it at a discount. To be fair, you're at least a year behind schedule. When I spoke to the finance minister, shovels were supposed to be in the ground. I'm just, I got to press you on this because in Alberta, this is a crisis. It's a crisis for our economy. You're the industry minister. Do you think you've got to maybe reevaluate buying some oil, some, some rail cars to ship oil or getting that pipeline built faster? Do you have to reassess given the, the collapse in the price? Look, I understand the anxiety, the frustration that people in Calgary are facing as actually shared by many other Canadians. This is not only a concern in Alberta, but when I travel across the country, people are very supportive of our government's position of purchasing that pipeline, of building that pipeline. So they know we've taken action. We've made a significant investment of four point five billion dollars for that pipeline and that demonstrates that we're, do, we're willing to move forward on that very important project and right. to get it built in a timely manner and so we'll do whatever we can to help the oil and gas sector the automotive sector we've been very fortunate since we formed the government that overall the economy is doing very well GDP is going by three percent half a million jobs full-time jobs have right. been created in the last three years but we have much more to do and we're going to continue to work with all sectors in all the regions Minister Baines I got to leave it there. I really appreciate you joining us today. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Evan. Appreciate it.